Good evening. I'd like to uh, call the City Council meeting to order. Uh, today is uh, Monday, December 7th, 2015. Uh, my name is Dean Kilberg. I'm standing in for the mayor tonight who was unable to attend. Uh, I'd ask uh, for a reading of the roll, please. Mike Bruno? Here. Tara Burkhart? Here. Don Cummings? Dean Kilberg? Here. Craig Maladra? Here. Richard Marks? Here. Jim Radecki? Here. Mary Sino? Here. Tom Simonian? Here. Ron Singer? Here. Uh, Today is December 7th, 1940. Uh, today is December 7th, <laughs> 2015, but uh, today is the uh, 74th anniversary of the attack on, uh, the attack on Pearl Harbor. And uh, uh, a bit of history, 24 American uh, military uh, were killed in Pearl Harbor in the attack, and uh, over 1,800 were wounded. Uh, as we stand this evening for the pledge, I'd ask that you uh, keep in mind all those uh, that served our country, uh, that uh, were victims uh, of the attack at Pearl Harbor, as well as uh, we uh, extend our thoughts and uh, condolences to their families and their extended families. If you'd please stand. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. M3 public hearings, uh, special items and presentations. Uh, item A on the agenda uh, will be delayed to a later date. Item B, uh, <clears throat> Mental Health Board presentation. Tonight we're pleased to have with us uh, members of the uh, Mental Health Board. <coughs> we'll be uh, presenting on uh, their donations for uh, 2015. Uh, representing the Mental Health Board and will get things started for us this evening is Susie Shogren. Uh, Susie sh uh, serves as uh, the chair for the Mental Health Board. Welcome. Thank you. Good evening and thank you for the opportunity to speak with you tonight. My name is Susie Shogren and I am one of the seven members of the Geneva Mental Health Board. Um, I am one of three people from the Mental Health Board who will be updating you with the relative information from our work on the 708 Board this past year. Uh, before I introduce the other members of the Mental Health Board, I want to express sincere gratitude and considerable thanks to two people in particular. The first is the former chairman of the Mental Health Board, John Ford. John's leadership and activism were an integral part of m the many services provided to Geneva residents today. And the second person I want to thank is Mary McKittrick for her patience and guidance while I, um, as a rookie, navigate and learn the responsibilities and role as chairperson. Thank you, Mary. I'm very proud to introduce uh, members of the Mental Health Board. They are Ele Eleanor Hamilton, Connie Wagner, Christine Kautz, Laura Buckley, and two who are not able to be here tonight are Cheryl Johnson and Margot McAllister, or McAllister. I believe the community is fortunate to have representation from this group of people because the members prioritize their passion to serve those in our community with mental health developmental disabilities, or substance abuse needs. Additionally, the members of this board have or had, some are retired, uh, professions that include clinical psychologist, a clinical therapist, a licensed social worker, executive director of a county health department, a patient engagement coach and emergency medical nurse, a school nurse, and a special education teacher. The collective group's professional experiences has provided an insightful and educated ability to discuss, make decisions, and carry out responsibilities relative to the people that the 708 board was created to serve. I'm going to share with you an update of the board's work and actions during 2015. This past year, we spent time writing and developing a mission statement in order to guide and focus our efforts. Our mission statement reads, the Geneva Mental Health Board supports mental health in funding, advocacy, and education with the focus on providing assistance to Geneva residents in the areas of developmental disabilities, mental illness, and substance abuse. We attempt to fill our duties of this board in a conscientious and responsible manner. It is the principal legal responsibility of this board to carry out the funding duty that requires members to oversee and execute, execute the annual evaluation of and decision process of Geneva's mental health needs. We follow the Geneva Ordinance, Ordinance 8930 and Illinois Statute 405 
ILCS 20 guidelines for non-home rural communities. This year, more than ever before, we were acutely aware of the tremendous need of the service providers for additional funds due to the precarious financial situation in our state. The discernment process weighed heavy on our hearts and minds knowing the amount of need that exists. To solicit funds, service providers submit a grant application for their agencies. In November of each year, we listen to and ask questions of the rep representatives from the service agencies before coming to a monetary consensus for each service provider and distribute funds. We made changes this year to the application to fulfill our fiscal responsibility by requesting data that seeks information regarding local needs, services to Geneva residents, and the effectiveness of the services provided. Our advocacy efforts, excuse me, we also requested that the service providers be mindful of compliance with supplementation when computing hours and numbers of individuals served. It is our hope that the funds that the 15 different service providers re received from Geneva will enhance their ability to carry out the work they currently do for the Geneva residents. Our advocacy efforts are ongoing. Simply put, we advocate for sufficient and effective developmental disability, mental health, and substance abuse services for Geneva residents. As a member of the Association of Community Mental Health Authority of Illinois, the 708 Board looks for their leadership and guidance for gathering information about the latest actions or decisions made by law and policymakers. We discuss the impact of those decisions and the, the impact those decisions may have on our community and possibly develop positions on those decisions. Finally, but perhaps most importantly, we hold our responsibility to educate and create and support awareness very high on the to-do list. We view the efforts of the 708 Board to be collaborative with other agencies or, or organizations that also work to benefit mental health. For example, this past May, which is National Mental Health Month, the Geneva Public Library, Geneva Middle School North, and Geneva High School Libraries worked with our 708 Board to create an awareness campaign supporting the mantra of Erase the Stigma. Green ribbons, which is the mental health color, were placed around trees outside the library and displays were put up inside the libraries. Books and brochures from a plethora of service agency were available for individuals to peruse. <clears throat> One of the librarians commented, while we may never know, if this display helped just one person, it will have been worth all the effort. And as a 708 board, we couldn't agree more, especially if that one person was a student in Geneva. The 708 board may also function in a liaison role, connecting service providers and agencies with one another so that they can offer or administer aid and, and assistance with a resident in need of mental health, developmental disability, or substance abuse help. Recently, we received an invitation to listen to the presentation from the Fox River Valley Initiative Group, whose efforts have begun have just begun to champion the needs of mental health. We remain open to collaborative efforts with organizations that may be in a great position to further advance meeting the needs of Geneva residents. Additionally, we invite speakers who work in the mental health arena to some of our monthly meetings so that we are kept informed and of the most current and timely aspects of mental health services and needs. Many of the board members have taken advantage of attending presentations at other locations, such as the League of Women Voters presentation on the status of mental health in our community. Members of the board have visited the service providers' facilities to take tours and meet with the executive directors for our own information and educational purpose. We look forward to 2016 and the opportunity to continue to provide collaborative work with many others to bring Geneva residents in need of mental health developmental disability or substance abuse health help the resources that provide optimal health and happiness. And now Eleanor will speak with you. Good evening. Uh, it's, it's good to be here and Susie has really summarized what our mental health board has been up to over the past years, uh, over the past year specifically. Um, there is an organization which Susie mentioned, the Association of Community Health Authorities in Illinois, and our board has been a member of uh, this organization for a long time. Most of the people who attend their quarterly meetings are full-time staff from large mental health boards such as county-wide mental health boards or county health departments. But for the first time, uh, I was able to uh, attend a meeting last week of this organization and was able to 
bring back a lot of information which we then kind of put together with what we know to be true and what we've learned in terms of being on the mental health board. Uh, so what I wanted to do was to combine all of that information and talk to you uh, very briefly about an overview of mental health in Illinois in 2015, and I'm calling it the good, the bad, and the ugly. Uh, I want to mention three people who gave presentations at this uh, meeting that I attended. Uh, Barbara Ever Edwards from Healthcare Management Associates, Dorelia Rivera from Blue Cross Blue Shield of Illinois, and Ed McManus from McManus Consulting. They were very knowledgeable and really filled in the perspectives that, that we all had from being on the Mental Health Board and from our professional backgrounds. Now, I said I wanted to talk about the good, the bad, and the ugly, but I'm really an optimistic person, so I'm going to go in reverse order. And so here are some points, the ugly, the things that are real pain points in the landscape of mental health uh, in Illinois in 2015. Um, first of all, the state budget impasse has had a huge negative impact on local service providers. Uh, some have restricted services and others may eventually go out of business. I won't belabor this because I know that you yourselves are struggling with, with these same issues. Um, the second uh, pain point in Illinois is the slow pace of Illinois in moving away from institutional care, specifically for the developmental disabilities population. Um, in general, the country has moved far, far away and there is almost no one in institutional care. 14 states have no institutions whatsoever. Illinois is, is really an outlier here. And in fact, um, a US appeals court judge not too long ago uh, described Illinois as being a, quote, laggard outlier, unquote, quote, in terms of their movement away from institutional care and to community supports. Uh, the slow pace of this change is hard to understand because we know that the cost of community supports is typically less than half the supports of having someone cared for in an institution. So this is a situation where there, there are reasons why some people don't want this to happen, but it's not a cost reason. Actually, best practice and cost are on the same side here. Okay, let's go on to the bad. And when I say the bad, I mean areas where there's difficulty, but, but we, we need to be aware of, of what's going on there. Um, in the transition to managed care, there's a lot of change. And so change is always hard, and it's hard for systems to, uh, to adjust to. So while there's a foundation of services under managed care that are included in both private insurance and public insurance, Medicare and Medicaid, uh, huge needs remain for 708 board funding. And kind of the landscape of what needs are being covered now under managed care and what needs remain for a 708 board such as ours is becoming more clear. The areas that are in great need of 708 board funding include things like information services systems of service providers, uh, supported housing, job training, case management, benefits navigation, and transportation. These are all areas that are necessary uh, for the support of the populations that we're, we're here to serve, uh, and they're all areas that, that are not specifically supported under the managed care model. One of the things that uh, we know in general in, in the health area, and we're also learning that it's true in the mental health area, is that only 20% of health outcomes are determined by the clinical care. Actually, what happens when someone sees the prof professional service providers? Other factors account for the other 80% in terms of health outcomes. So these services that I was just mentioning are really important because they're accounting for a lot of the end result in terms of a, a people's uh, length of life and also their quality of life. All right, that brings us to the good. I always like to talk about the good uh, uh, most. Um, we're in the third year of implementation of the Affordable Care Act, and we know that the percentage of the population covered by both private insurance and Medicaid has increased significantly. So there are a lot more people covered and a lot more people can go to seek help in the areas of mental health, developmental disabilities, substance abuse than previously just by using their insurance or one of the public uh, programs they're covered under. 
We also know that the Affordable Care Act includes parity of benefits for physical and mental health uh, services, which was a long-term goal in the mental health field. Previously, uh, insurance plans, for example, could set up a system of benefits for physical health needs and a completely different system, and usually much less, system of benefits for mental health needs, and now that's not the case. There is parity. So that's a, a really uh, a good uh, benefit. We also know that the focus in the field of mental health is shifting from health encounters to health outcomes. So it's not just that someone gets hooked up with a service provider. What's important is, do they live longer? Do they have a better quality of life? That's what we're looking for. That's what uh, the focus is on throughout health and mental health at this time. To answer that kind of question, we need a lot of data to have that focus. And certainly, as Susie mentioned, our mental health board has revised its funding application to reflect this focus. It's probably not the last revision in this area that we'll undertake. Um, finally, in, in general, the strengths of 708 boards, and our board in particular, include the ability to support areas that are not supported through clients' private and public insurance, such as those needs discussed above, such as the information systems, information services systems of providers, supported housing, job training. Our knowledge of our local service providers and our ability to provide oversight based on the health outcome data that service providers are collecting is, is very good because we know these agencies and we have long-standing relationships with them. So we thank you for uh, uh, being able to continue to do this work and to provide these, uh, this, uh, these funds to the service providers. Thank you. Thank you. And, and now Christine Kautz is going to uh, speak. Hello, I'm Christine Kautz. Thank you for having us tonight. Um, last year, we, the board, um, highlighted the continuing issue with the declining state funding, as has been mentioned by the other two board members. Um, as you know, this also continues to be a problem, and we don't see it getting any better. Um, in fact, it will probably get worse. Uh, the state is approximately right now about three to six months behind in their repayments. Um, to uh, the facilities that provide these services. And this lack of funding puts a significant strain on the local funding bodies such as the 708 boards. So we realize also that this is a strain on the city's budgets as well. And so the 708 board would like to graciously thank you for your continued support in keeping our funding steady um, for our residents. So thank you very much. An encouraging development has emerged at the county level um, that Susie mentioned was that Fox River Valley initiative. This is a grassroots initiative of clergy, um, well, churches, agencies, and community members, um, a really smart group of people. We went and listened to them, a really smart group of people that are concerned about mental health, access, treatment, and also affordable housing um, for people living with mental illness. This group is working with, the ju with judges, with the state's attorney's office, also with Sheriff Kramer's office, um, to provide what's called critical incident training. It's a special training where uh, police officers, law enforcement learn how to de-escalate those with mental health problems. There's a lot of special skill in dealing with that, um, and this critical incident training is quite, um, quite effective. So the goal of this is to keep the mentally ill out of the jails where we know, you know, individually as a person that doesn't really do a whole lot to help them get better. And it's a very inexpensive and ineffective way for taxpayers' dollars to, um, to house these, these people living with mental illness. So affordable housing for people with developmental delays, mental illness, and addictions continues to be a big issue in not just our community, but in every community. So lastly, our agencies are doing outstanding work, as Eleanor outlined. Um, we've got a lot of great, great stuff on the horizon. Um, and even though we, f we fear the future financially, we certainly don't fear the future with our hope and diligence and serving this population and, and our community. So we thank you again for your attention this evening and look forward to the continued work together with the people of Geneva. Thank you. Thank you. Um, there might be a few questions uh, or comments from the, uh, the alderman at this time. Uh, 
Uh, Susie, maybe you might be prepared to field a few uh, questions. Maybe there won't be any questions. Uh, yes, sir, is one. Um, in regards to the, uh, the mic, please. The critical incident <clears throat> training, I just and you guys were coming tonight, and so I'd spoken to the social workers at the hospital and asked what could be done differently, and they mentioned what you spoke of about the critical incident training. They said that the county had sent some of the officers, and I wondered if we're looking at sending any of the Geneva officers for that. Because they said it, made, it makes a big difference. Yeah. Um, I I'm, don't personally know if they are or they aren't. Um, we learned mostly about that through the um, meetings we attended with the Fox River Valley Initiative. Yeah. I was just hoping it would be something maybe we could yeah. start thinking about. Too. Absolutely. Thank you. Yes. We know it makes, makes a difference, absolutely. Any other questions? Um, first, I want to thank uh, our mental health board. Uh, uh, I appreciate your professional presentations this evening, all three of you. Uh, really a lot of good information. It's very helpful to us as a, as a city council. Uh, obviously, you're all very passionate about what you do, and your service to the community is certainly appreciated. Uh, you're all volunteers, and we'll let the community know that, and that you're uh, representing the interests of all taxpayers because these are taxpayer funds. And you work really independently of the city council on this. Uh, and uh, again, thank you for your, uh, your fine work and your service on the 708. And uh, uh, we'll look forward to uh, seeing you again uh, in 2016. Uh, as a little bit of a summary, some people might uh, want to know uh, actually uh, the level of funding involved here. Uh, you oversaw the distribution of $139,000 uh, to uh, approximately uh, about 15, 15. organizations mm -hmm. that serve the Fox Valley. Uh, two of the larger uh, uh, charities or organizations that receive the benefits, uh, AID received 32000 in funding as a result of your efforts. Mm -hmm. Ecker Center, uh, uh, about 32000 These are rounded, but uh, uh, those are two of the larger ones. The Lazarus House... Uh, uh, I'm sorry, Tri-City Family Services, about $27,000. Uh, Lazarus House, about $12,000. And then there are several others that are less than that. But again, that gives uh, the aldermen as well as the community uh, that would be watching tonight on TV a little bit of an idea of, uh, of those organizations that you're touching that, are, uh, 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 that serve uh, people here locally in Geneva. Uh, Mary? Uh, Mr. Chairman, I just wanted to add, too, if anyone wants to look at the exact numbers, uh, they're in the bill list. Um, you'll see that under charitable donations. So each one is listed individually, alphabetically. So you can look at that as well. Okay. Uh, yes, Jim. Alderman uh, Radecki. Hi, again, thanks for all of your work. And I, I do have a question about um, what the, the board's position is. I know that um, in years past, we've allocated funds for a group home. And it took several years to to accumulate enough funds for that home to actually become a reality not too long ago. Uh, what's, the, what's the board's current position with allocating funds for another group home, projections? I mean, I'd like to hear your thoughts on it's that. It's actually on our agenda for January and February. Um, generally speaking, it's uh, the group home model um, is, you know, um, one of the uh, options for developmental disability, mental health um, individuals. Uh, they are going away from the institutional setting. Um, and we have, um, with our 708 board funds, we have a uh, certificate of deposit that acts as a savings previously that was uh, what funded that group home in Geneva. Um, and we are going to decide, hopefully early in the next quarter, exactly what to do with the reserve funds with regard to that. Are, are you allocating any of this year's funds towards a group home not, going into that? No. Or not? Okay, thanks. Okay, any other questions? If not, again, thank you very much for coming tonight. Thank and you. happy holidays to all of thank you. Thank you, thanks for having us. Okay, item four, amendments to the agenda. Are there any amendments to be brought forward? Item five, the omnibus agenda. Um, uh, all items listed with an asterisk are considered to be routine by the city council and will be enacted by one motion. There will be no separate discussion on these items unless the council member or citizen so requests. 
in which event the item would be removed from the omnibus agenda and considered in its normal uh, sequence on the agenda. Is there a motion to approve the omnibus so agenda moved. is presented? Moved by second. And moved and seconded. Parks and Bruno? Bruno. Yes. Any, uh, any discussion? If not, uh, would you please read the roll? <clears throat> Tom Simonian? Aye. Ron Singer? Aye. Mike Bruno? Aye. Tara Burkhart? Aye. Ian Kilberg? Aye. Richard Maladra? Aye. Richard Mark? Aye. Jim Redecky? Aye. Mary Sino? Aye. That brings us to um, item nine, other items in correspondence. Item A, uh, recommend acceptance of strategic planning goal session report as presented. Is there a motion to uh, approve the report? So moved. Moved by Maladra. Seconded by Sino. Would you please read the roll? Tom Simonian. Abstain. Ron Singer. Aye. Mike Bruno. Aye. Dara Burkhart. Aye. Dean Kilberg. Aye. Greg Maladra. Aye. Richard Marks. Aye. Jim Redecky. Aye. Mary Sino. Aye. Motion carries. Item 10, municipal bills for payment in the amount of $1,732,297.23. Recommended by the city administrator. Is there a motion to approve the bills for payment? Mr. Chair, I uh, move that we approve and pay the bills as read. The individual items can be found in tonight's packet on the city website. Uh, second. Moved by Bruno, seconded by Marks. Any discussion? If not, if you'd please read the roll. Tom Simonian? Aye. Ben Singer? Aye. Mike Bruno? Aye. Darrell Burkhart? Uh, aye. Dean Kilberg? Aye. Rick Maladra? Aye. Richard Marks? Aye. Jim Decky? Aye. Mary Sino? Aye. Yeah, this brings us to item 11, Committee of the Whole Items for Business. We have uh, one item left on that list uh, to attend to. Item A, uh, recommend resolution number 2015-113, authorizing purchase of Alltech TA50 bucket truck from Alltech Industries in the amount of $199,557. So moved. So moved by Marks. Is there a second? Second. Seconded by Maladra. Uh, discussion. Seeing none, I take it we're prepared to vote. If you'd please read the roll. Tom Simonian? <clears throat> Aye. Ron Singer? Aye. Mike Bruno? Aye. Tara Burkhart? Aye. Ian Kilberg? Aye. Greg Maladra? Aye. Richard Marks? Aye. Jim Redecky? Aye. Mary Sino? Aye. Motion carries. Item 12, presentation of ordinances, petitions, resolutions, and bid awards. Anything there? If not, item 13, new business. Is there uh, any alderman that would like to uh, bring forward new business? Alderman Maladra? Uh, yeah, I'd just like to remind everybody that uh, Geneva History Center has giving trees, and the Geneva Beautification Committee has a giving tree there, so if you would all do us a favor and pay a visit, it would be greatly appreciated by former Alderman Flanagan and myself. Great. Good. Uh, yes, Alderman Bruno. Uh, I would like uh, to shout out to the chamber for uh, a more than uh, spectacular uh, Christmas walk event. Um, it is what Geneva festivals aspire to be, and every town that knows us would love to have it. So, you know, thank you to the chamber, and congratulations to everyone that had input. Great. Uh, anyone else? Is there anyone in the audience? Any uh, anyone that would like to address the council this evening on uh, during new business? Thank you for all your leadership. You all do an outstanding job. Say, you know what? Why don't you come forward and introduce yourself? Because we don't get too many of these. <laughs> yeah. This is a giving season, isn't it? <laughs> uh, my name's Gary Gadzinski, and I live at 108 South Cambridge Drive in uh, Pepper Pike. But I've been here. I just a concerned citizen. I like to observe what's going on in my government, and but all of you, I mean all of you, have been outstanding in terms of your leadership and the decisions that you make. And you're, I'm just impressed. Thank you for that service. Uh, thank thank you. you very thank much. You. Obviously, it looks like you have some military in your background. It looks like we thank you for your service as well. Thank you. Very good. Any other new business? We all feel good about that. Don't we? <laughs> can, he, can he come up and do that again? <laughs> can we put you on retainer? <laughs> okay.
Okay. Uh, no other new business. Uh, that brings us to item 14. Tonight, there's a need for a closed session on pending litigation, the purchase or lease of real property for the use of the public body and collecting negotiating matters between the public body and its employees or the representatives. Uh, is there a motion to go into closed session? So moved. Second. Moved by uh, Simonian, I believe, uh, seconded by Marks. Uh, we'll need a roll call on that if you'd please read the roll. Tom Simonian? Aye. Don Singer? Aye. Mike Bruno? Aye. Tara Burkhart? Aye. Dean Kilberg? Kirk Craig Yes. Yeah. Aye. Uh, Richard Marks? Aye. Jim Redecky? Aye. Mary Sino? Aye. Good. Uh, we don't anticipate that there will be any public, uh, there will be any action taken by the council this evening coming out of closed session. So, again, those of you that have attended tonight, thank you very much. And, uh, uh, maybe we'll see you in 2016. We'll look forward to it. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you.